So I just started my prep for the 2024 season of USBC and I, I thought it might take you with me. So I loaded all of my stuff in last week. So all we have to take today, jug of milk, bag of stuff, let's head off to the lab. So right now, uh, qualifiers is about two months away. We're a little bit under two months, actually. I'm still in kind of the script writing process of my routine. Uh, we've basically finalized my coffee. My script is pretty close to being done, uh, but I'm not at the point where I'm doing full rehearsals yet. So today I'm hoping to really dig through all the wares I currently have from past years, pick the ones I'm gonna use again, and then hopefully make a list of what I need to purchase for this coming year. This is my huge, terrifying box <laughs> of competition past. So uh, let's uh, let's see what we've got in here. These are milk pitchers. Uh, I've got two that I use for milk sharing, uh, a nice 32 ounce one, and then a little, I don't even know what size this one is. This one's a bit smaller. Uh, it's from Barista Hustle. I've been using these since like day one of competition. Don't think I'm changing them. Cups, just, just so many milk and espresso cups, tiny spoons. Tamp, this is a force tamp, so it's a pressurized tamp. I'll show you how it works uh, over there. I will I will probably use this again. We'll see, still deciding. Scales, can't really, can't really not use those. Mats, station setup, an infinite amount of towels. Um, and then actually this is kind of one of the tools that I'm, I'm taking for a test run right now. Uh, this is the, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a, <laughs> a little beauty. <laughs> <laughs> vlog right here. Um, this is a WDT tool. Uh, this is the auto comb from Barista Hustle. So same folks who make the pitcher right here. Now I've used WDT for a couple years now. I did it manually by hand um, in 2022 when I won. And then I used the Moonraker from Weber last year in nationals. Um, this is new. This is new to the market. Um, I am trying it out. I, I think I will probably use it this year, but again, I've got to like kind of put it through the ringer first <laughs> to see how it goes with my workflow. Um, I've got coffee loaded into the hopper already. So I'm just going to get my station set up and we'll go from there. Okay, so all of this is, is pretty liable to change once I, I start practicing, but I like to start out just kind of figuring out what my grinder to machine workflow is gonna be. It's kind of tricky because in this lab, um, there's a knock box right here. And so this usually wouldn't be here on stage in competition, but I have to kind of work around uh, and adjust to it being here during practice. So I'm gonna stick my scale up here, do my tamping mat. We'll see how that goes right there. And then down here, I'm gonna set up all my, all my equipment. So tamp and then WDT as well. Ooh, we are, we are spraying a little bit. There we go. So in theory, dose, place your portafilter right there. WDT. And then see, I'm like running into like physically, that's gonna be tricky. So WDT might live there. Tamp, I think for now, this feels pretty good. Now I've got all of my, my cups from last year. Um, for qualifiers, which is what's happening first, which is a slightly like truncated version of the competition, uh, it's only a 10 minute routine. And in that routine, you have two courses, uh, which are espresso and signature. So I don't have to worry about my milk drink yet, but I do wanna like practice and get back in the routine of practicing it right now. Then I used these last year for espresso. Uh, I don't know if this is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> or not, I'm not, not super akin to this format of video, but uh, these cups right here are the Joey Espresso Cups from Fellow. Uh, I used them last year and really liked them. However, there is one issue that I ran into uh, when it came to the sponsored machine and it's the reason I probably won't use them again. Issue that you run into with this machine, uh, and you'll notice it if you watch my routine uh, for nationals last year, uh, is that uh, this adds some height. The portafilter is also very, very close um, to the drip tray. And then you're trying to use these pretty tall, pretty sizable cups. So you end up having to like fully crank them under there. And it's doable, but it's not fast. It's not super efficient. 
Last year we were also using baskets and like just all sorts of weird stuff uh, where all of our shots were dropping super quickly. And so you basically had like one second to just crank these cups underneath before your shots were dropping. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Tastes like Monarch. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's put some milk in that. Now, one of the other things that I'm in the process of deciding right now uh, is gonna be what milk I actually wanna use in competition. This year is kind of interesting because it really is anyone's, <laughs> anyone's guess on what's gonna be uh, popular and successful in past years in the score sheets. Um, you have only been allowed to use dairy milk, cow's milk, like all that stuff. And so there were a couple ways that competitors had figured out to um, mess around with the format of dairy milk. So one of the most popular, even to this day, um, was created by Ben Putt, who is uh, a longtime Canadian barista champion. Um, he put together freeze distilled milk, which you've seen me use many, many times in the past. Um, simply the process of freezing and then slowly thawing your milk uh, off to about 50 to 30%. That way you really concentrate the proteins and sugars and fats and good stuff in the milk and you remove a lot of that water weight. Could do that. That's been done for a long time. It's delicious, of course. It is a little less predictable of a method um, to concentrate milk. And so um, Anthony Douglas, who was WBC my year, um, he came up with a process called cryodesiccation, which is essentially a freeze drying milk. So similar concept of concentrating the good stuff in milk and removing the water weight, but he kind of went, <laughs> he kind of went the opposite direction. Um, and turned it into powder and then rehydrated that powder back into milk. And so it's a, it's a higher concentration than you would find in something like this. That's a lot of words to say that those are two options if I choose to do dairy milk this year. However, the rules changed. So now you can use um, alternative and plant-based milks as long as they're commercially available, which, which should be fun, but it just makes the milk course a little less straightforward than it used to be. I'm uh, kind of nervous. I haven't milk shared uh, in the competition setup in a while, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> really blast it right out of the gate. I'm never like the biggest fan of this like the steam wand shape curvature of it makes it a little bit tricky sometimes to put bigger pitchers under but it's all part of the game okay four shots kind of the trick here is to keep your milk moving as much as possible um, so that that air doesn't create like a stiff layer of foam on the top that gonna make that's gonna make it really difficult to pour with bear with me here it's always <laughs> <laughs> Always a tricky game to talk and pour at the same time. All right, that's one. Mm, that's two. Dang, I might have, I may have stiffed myself on my, my milk portions. We'll see how this goes. Getting a little tight here. It's always the, it's always the third one that goes a little bit awry. Okay, actually that one is not not so bad and pretty acceptable waste in here. <laughs> you get you get docked if you have too much milk left over. They're not all the worst things ever. Um, I am I am decently happy with this one. This is my first, second, third, and fourth pour uh, in descending order, and you you can pretty clearly see flaws in all of them. This one is okay <laughs> this is ideally i think what my lowest tier will look like by the time competition wraps around this one is simply off center you can see um i had some weird like milk flow issues on this side this one you can already see some kind of like degradation in the milk quality and additionally i did not incorporate the milk into the crema well enough and so there's like discoloring happening on this side and then there's just some overall like kind of proportion issues on this one and then, and then this, 
<laughs> this strange uh, little boy over here just went kind of wrong all around. So obviously some misshapen asymmetrical parts. There's like discoloring up here. You can already start to see some visible bubbles up in this corner and a little bit down around the edges as well. This is why we practice. And even though this course is not important to the first round of competition, uh, this is why we start practicing it now because there is definitely work that needs to be done. But yeah, um, I think those are most of the things that are top of mind today in practice. And so I'm gonna go through a little bit more of my workflow and see if I can optimize that a little bit more, uh, get some more shots pulled, do a little bit more milk practice, and then make my shopping list for what I need to get for the season. And then I think we can, we can probably wrap today. This is a pretty light day, it's nice. Okay, considering it is the, the day before Thanksgiving right now, I think I'm gonna wrap up uh, for today. I've got a good list of what I need in terms of regular tools for the rest of the season. I've got a pretty good idea about where my like milk course levels are at right now and what I need to do to get that ready. Pretty good idea about workflow. Yeah, so I think that's that's kind of the, the base. I, I'm excited for this season, I'll be honest. I think, I think going into this season versus past seasons, it took me a lot longer to get to my script theme and what I wanted to talk about. But once I figured that out, I feel like it's all come together really quickly. And I'm speaking about it <laughs> very vaguely right now uh, because I don't want to really spoil anything. Uh, and in addition, like stuff might change. So I don't want to like set you up with any expectations that I don't follow through on. Uh, but for the most part, I am a pretty excited. I know it's been, I think, three years now that I've been kind of documenting um, USB-C to some extent online. And so some of you have been through this with me before. And to some of you, this is probably pretty new and weird. And you don't really know what you clicked into. And that's totally fine. My goal this year is to highlight at least a lot more like behind the scenes than I usually do. So just taking chances to like kind of talk through what I'm actually doing and what's going on behind the scenes rather than just being like, here's what happened. <laughs> I'd like to get you a little bit more into the, the back process of this all, which is like days like this, where it's like not super glamorous, but it's just testing stuff out and trying different tools and just kind of like doing rudimentary practice. I feel like I keep saying that I'm very excited about this season and, and really, oh, rag on the ground. Really, that is, that's true like, every season i one of the things i always say to myself and then say to other people and especially like new competitors who are wanting to do this is that you have to like you have to enjoy this <laughs> this part of it um I'm, I'm pretty sure every barista competitor who competes myself included like we want to win that's why we're doing this uh, but at the same time you have to have something else you're taking away uh, from the whole experience otherwise you're just you're setting yourself up um for a lot of heartache and disappointment in the process. I feel like that kind of segues into the, the answer I always give people when they ask me why I'm still doing this. Um, 
especially after after winning in 2022 and and really the truth of it is that this is this entire process of getting one of these routines ready is such an interesting chance for learning that is is kind of hard to replicate in any other scenario um, barista competitions really force you to learn new things really really quickly um, and personally i find that really beneficial for myself so i tell people as long as i am having fun as long as i'm enjoying it and as long as i feel like i am still I don't know, as long as I'm still learning something, um, I feel like that's my metric for whether I wanna compete again. But I could wax poetic <laughs> about competition uh, and coffee also pretty much all day, but it's like 3.30, Thanksgiving is tomorrow, and I would like to go home. So I'll see you all next time. This has been fun. I can't promise how often these sort of vlogs will exist, but trying to get into the habit, this is definitely a new, a new muscle I need to exercise. So see you all next time. It's always so weird to come over here <laughs> and then turn off the camera afterwards.